Here we see a static HTML web page with a form. If we were to process this with a PHP script, as we have been doing, we can send the values to the PHP page and display the results. However, suppose we wanted to display the results right here on the same page. How would we do that? First of all, we would need to change the extension to .php. Then we would need to have our typical PHP code inside the same page. So here we see our form, and now the action is being processed by the same page on which the form is. And here we have the PHP code for our error messages. We have two text box, an error message for both, and then we have the final result. Right now we have four PHP blocks and typically at the top of the page you would be storing the values from the form into a variable and I only have one here for purposes of demonstration. When this page loads the PHP interpreter is going to read this. It's not going to understand what dollar underscore post width is because number one we're at the top of the page we haven't even gotten to the form yet php will understand this but these variables have no value so we are going to have some error messages so this is what's going to happen as soon as we load this page we're going to have an error message here because the variable is not defined. We're going to have an error message here because the variable is not defined. We're going to have another one here and another one here. So how do we get around that? What you want to do is you want to set all of your variables to have a value. You want to initialize these variables to an empty string. Therefore, you will not get an error message and nothing will be displayed there. Therefore, everything is fine. Notice, when I load the page, there are no error messages. So how do we handle retrieving the values from the form? We have some typical PHP code here. We're checking the value for the width to see whether or not it's empty. If it is empty, we're giving our error message. Then we're setting our flag variable. Else, we're going to store the value in our variable. However, when the form loads, this text box is empty. So when the form loads, we have an error message sitting here, which looks a little bit out of place. You typically don't give the user an error message until they've done something wrong. The way we typically handle this situation when the form is posted back to the same page, also known as a postback, is to check whether or not the form has been posted. We have the dollar underscore server global variable, and we have the request method parameter here. And if indeed that has been posted, then we execute the code inside the curly braces. If not, we're not going to do anything. Now when we load our page, there is no error message because the, the form has not been submitted yet. When I click the button, there's our first error message. If I put a value in here, my error message will go away. Notice that the value also disappeared. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to place an echo in my else statement just to verify that we were able to retrieve the width. Now I will type in a value. Notice the message is up here because it's in the top section of the PHP code. 
All right, so we did retrieve the value. However, it does disappear from the text box. This is what happens when the form is posted back to the same page or back to itself. This typically does not happen when a form is posted to another page. When you go back, the values remain unless they are a password. They are automatically removed by the browser. How we keep the data inside the form element is by coding in the value. We will do that the same way that we code our error messages with some PHP code and the echo statement. So here we are echoing the variable which holds the value for the width. Now remember, we had some problems with our error messages when we loaded the page. So we need to do the same thing because when the page loads, this statement will be executed and PHP is not going to have any idea of what this variable is. So we need to initialize this to an empty string. So here I have set the width to nothing so that I will not have an error message in my page the first time the page loads. Once the form has been submitted, then we will set a value to the variable. Notice I still have my test echo statement in my else here. Now I will test my form. I will click the button. There's my error message. I will enter a new value. I will click the button. The value is there, and here's my test echo up here. This is referred to as a sticky form because we are making the values stick in the form fields. Because we are essentially hard coding the value in using PHP, when we try to clear the form, this button will not work. What type equals reset does it restores the values in the form to their initial values. And in this case, we do have an initial value already set. So if I try to clear this form, it will not work. Notice when I put in a new value, I can overwrite the existing value. However, the minute I set clear form, it's going to take it back to the original value for width. So you would need a little bit of JavaScript to work around that. Now we're finished with the width text box. We'll work with the height. In my HTML code, I will now use my PHP echo statement to retain the value of the height once it is entered. Because we have a variable whose value is not known when the page loads, we need to initialize this to an empty string. So here we see that. Now I'm going to use another approach to determine if the form has been submitted. You can also use the isSet function to determine if a form element has a value. Even though we code in values in HTML, those values do not really exist until form has been submitted. I am using the Submit button. You may see people using a hidden field. You may also see people checking every individual form element using isSet. So inside my isSetIf, I have the exact same if-else code checking for the height, giving the error message. So now when I click the button, I will see two error messages. I will enter two different values. I will click the button. My two different values are now sticky in my form. And here are my test echoes so that we see indeed that everything worked. There were no error messages when this page loaded. I would like to point out that we have two independent if statements here. The only reason we have these here is because I wanted to show you the two different approaches. One way is to use is set to determine if the form has been posted. The other way is to use the dollar underscore server global variable and testing for the request method. You don't necessarily need them both, but because we do have them both, I need to set the is okay in both of my else's. 
I also need to initialize my is OK here because I have a third independent if. So here is my formula being stored in the variable. And when I enter values and click, I see my message. Here is the revised code. And now we are setting the test variable to true as we typically would. All of the code is placed inside the main if. And this if checks to see if the form has been submitted. There is my opening curly brace. There is my closing curly brace. And it is always a good idea to comment your code so you know where your ending delimiters are. So here is the first if that checks for the width gives the error message, sets the value if everything is OK. Here's the second if, sets the error message, and sets the value if everything is OK. And here is the final if, which ultimately displays the message to the user.